Listen, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. People from New Jersey scare the hell out of me. So I tell her, you got big ears, sweetie. I'm not trying to be mean. It's just a Jersey thing. Why be offended? That one South Park episode has done irreparable harm to my brain. And like, who is she? Is she God? No. You don't ever, ever, you whack job. But today we are not gonna talk about stereotypes. We're gonna talk about a small city in New Jersey called Hoboken. Hoboken has around 60,000 people and is right next to Jersey City. It's part of the New York metropolitan area and is connected to Manhattan by train, bus, and ferry. And for the past four years, not one single pedestrian death has occurred there. What makes this truly remarkable though, is that in the rest of the country, pedestrian deaths are skyrocketing. Up until around 2009, they were actually on a downwards trend, but something happened here. So right around this time, the Obama administration approved new regulations on cars that were meant to improve their fuel efficiency. The goal is to set one national standard that will rapidly increase fuel efficiency without compromising safety. However, they made it such that bigger cars had less stringent standards. For instance, a Toyota Avalon would have to get around 25 miles per gallon, while the Chevrolet Tahoe would only need to get 21. And if a car manufacturer realized their product wouldn't meet the fuel regulations, it was often easier for them to just add a bit more weight than actually re-engineering them to be more efficient. The numbers bear this out. Every kind of vehicle from sedans to pickup trucks has been getting heavier. And while sales of sedans have declined, heavier vehicles, especially truck SUVs, have utterly exploded in popularity. The market has shifted towards bigger, bulkier cars, which are substantially more dangerous to pedestrians than smaller, lighter ones. For what it's worth, this increase has been almost exclusively in urban areas, and it's also been especially pronounced with nighttime crashes. It also isn't helping that our fastest growing cities tend to be Sunbelt metros where the average arterial street looks like this. So what we have is a situation where pedestrians were already getting hit pretty frequently, but in the past, it would be with smaller, lighter vehicles that were a lot less likely to be fatal, whereas now, these monstrosities are all over the place, and when crashes inevitably occur, they're much more likely to be lethal. So, what is different about Hoboken? On the one hand, there are a few obvious advantages this place has. The streets are tight, it's hard to drive fast, there's a lot of people walking around, drivers expect to see pedestrians, it's hard to drive big cars there. But all of these are true for New York City in general, and while New York is considered one of the safest cities to be a pedestrian in, tons of people are still fatally hit there every year. What sets Hoboken apart is how often they use this technique called daylighting. When cities daylight intersections, it means they clear obstacles, usually parked cars, which then opens up a motorist sight lines and allows them to better see people who are about to cross. And a lot of cities already do this. I mean, I see this where I live in downtown Phoenix, although it isn't well enforced, but what Hoboken is doing is on another level. While they aren't perfect, daylit intersections are everywhere. And a lot of them physically bar cars from parking there, not necessarily under the threat of a ticket, but by using extremely simple and cheap infrastructure that prevents them from doing so. In Hoboken, it's extremely common to see configurations like this, striped paint with flex posts that you can't park over. And just to cement this point even more, let me show you what can happen when a driver's sight lines aren't open. Notice how the cars are parked here. Now, just to be clear, the girl is okay. But when I saw this clip, which went viral on Twitter, a lot of people blamed the girl's parents for letting her play outside. And, and I suppose if you do have children and you supervise them 100% of the time, this probably wouldn't have happened. But if we are actually going to have a constructive discussion on how to prevent these things in the future, we need to acknowledge that human beings will never be perfect. There will be moments when you aren't paying attention or you're extremely tired or maybe you're driving a little faster than you should. And in that brief moment of vulnerability, something like this happens. <laughs> 
This happened because parked cars prevented the driver from seeing the girl, and so long as those cars are blocking the sidewalk, this could happen again. If you want to make a street safer, you have to change the street itself. Now you might be wondering, why isn't this practice common across all of New York City? And it's because the city is currently making a very purposeful choice to, instead of installing this kind of infrastructure, preserve a few more spaces for cars. No, I am not making this up. What's frustrating is that if you were to divide the city up into Hoboken-sized pieces, each of those pieces would be substantially more dangerous than Hoboken itself. In 2021, Hoboken recorded 20 pedestrian injuries, 18 cyclist injuries, and 51 motorist injuries. The East Village, which has a similar population, but lets cars park right up to the edge of the street, had one fatal crash, 41, 53, and 63 injuries, respectively. The 112113 zip code in Brooklyn, which is in the Crown Heights neighborhood, also has the same population as Hoboken, yet it had three fatalities and over 400 injuries in total. New York City is an incredible place. New York is America's transit-oriented city, but at the same time, it goes out of its way to cater towards drivers in the most bizarre and destructive ways. A lot of people don't realize this, but even in the densest parts of Manhattan, there is tons of free street parking. Granted, thousands of people drive in hoping to take advantage of it and circling the block for an hour to find a free spot isn't exactly unheard of, but the fact that there are so many streets in Manhattan where half the space is used as a publicly subsidized garage is insane. Despite everything I said in this video, Things in New York are getting better. The congestion pricing plan they're gonna implement soon is going to be a game changer for the quality of life there. So if there's any takeaways here, it's these. One is that most, if not all, pedestrian deaths are preventable. Hoboken is not the only place in the world with this achievement. The Swedish city of Gothenburg has over half a million people and was able to accomplish the same feat. There are some things that objectively make roads safer, and chances are your city is actively choosing not to implement them. Secondly, blaming individuals when a crash occurs isn't that helpful. I mean, sure, there's going to be cases where one person is clearly at fault. But this is a large-scale problem, and you'll never be able to berate an entire country into becoming better drivers. Infrastructure changes that have a proven history of reducing crashes work, and begging people to drive more carefully doesn't. We need drivers to follow the rules. We need people to realize that they're going through a residential community. And lastly, oversized vehicles like these do not belong in pedestrian-oriented cities. I'm not talking about fire trucks or delivery vans. I'm talking about things like this. Their size has no justifiable purpose outside of making more money and skirting fuel regulations. And I suppose there's some level of lizard brain appeal here. Spend $60,000 on this truck to show everyone you're the alpha male of your family. But really, these things are causing a crisis on our roads, and people who drive them face zero accountability for making our streets more dangerous. Okay, I'll see you guys later.